Hi, and welcome to this video where we're going to run through the questions, the multiple choice questions uh, that the OCR board have published for this topic of nucleic acids, which is uh, module 2.3. Okay, so if you haven't done these yet, download these uh, from the link below in the video, uh, or I set them to you on Teams. Do these questions and then come back to this video and you're ready to mark them and see how you did. Okay, let's get started. Question one. Which of the following uh, bonds are broken during DNA replication? Uh, this is the hydrogen bond between bases, okay, A. Um, yeah, so it's the, the un sort of unzipping, the helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds uh, before it's replicated. Which base is not found in RNA? That is thymine, it's C, because thymine is replaced with uracil in RNA. How many base pairs are in one full turn of the DNA double helix? Uh, this is 10, okay? Uh, I think I forgot to talk about this in the mind map, so add that into your mind map. It takes 10, um, 10 rungs of the ladder before the helix twists fully, okay? Um, four, analysis of a sample that found 20% of the bases were adenine. What percentage of the base would be pyrimidines? Well, this is almost a trick question because you actually don't even need this information at the top here because in all DNA, we know that pyrimidines pair with purines, so it must be you know, the double ring paired with the one ring on each rung so that the rungs are the same length. So it must be 50%, okay? Always DNA, if it's double-stranded, has 50% purines and 50% pyrimidines. To determine the structure of DNA, X-ray crystallography was used. Uh, this was the famous uh, X-ray crystal crystallographer, uh, Rosalind Franklin, who found the famous kind of X-shaped X-ray crystallography image, which um, gave evidence that it was a helix. Uh, sadly, she was not awarded the Nobel Prize because she sadly died um, before her discovery was widely recognized. And also uh, Watson and Crick kind of, um, kind of took her data without consent as well, which is a bit uh, uncalled for. Uh, okay, six. Analysis of a molecule of DNA found it contained 200 adenine bases, 20% of the total number in the strand. How many phosphate groups did it contain? We've got to do a little bit math here. So if 200 bases were 20%, then you can do a calculation, or potentially you can just see that if 200 is 20%, then 100% would be 1,000 bases. So there are 1,000 bases total in the strand. So if there's a thousand bases, there are a thousand nucleotides, and therefore there are a thousand phosphate groups. So it's D. Because remember, each nucleotide has a phosphate group. Got the rule. Oops. Ribose sugar and the base. This is actually should be attached here. Oops, made a mistake. There we go. And let's just correct this. It should be attached at this point here. There we go. That's better. Okay. Seven. Which of the following options, A to D, are the pyrimidine bases found in DNA? This is something you've just got to memorize. Um, so I, I don't know why I use this, but I, A, A and G are purines. My science teacher back when I learned this said the phrase silver soup terrine, uh, which is like a bowl for soup. That's what a terrine is. Um, and silver, the chemical symbol for silver is AG. So I remember AG, silver soup purine, AG purine. Don't ask me how that works, but it's stuck in my brain. So AG and purines, so the pyrimidines are therefore C and T, uh, these ones, okay? And remember it's in DNA, so uracil is right out because uracil is an RNA, so it's B. Eight, if 30% of the bases in a DNA molecule are adenine, what percent of the bases are guanine? Okay, so this is a bit of mass here. Okay, so adenine is 30%, therefore also 30% is thymine, T, so that's 60% total, so we're only left with 40% left, uh, and after that 40% left, 20% has got to be C, and 20% has got to be G, because they pair up, so therefore it's 20% A. Nine. Thymine comprised 36% of the bases in a sample of double-stranded DNA. Again, we've got to do a little bit of mass here. Okay, so 36 is thymine, and therefore 36 is A. If you add those together, we've got 72% total, 
which means that we only have, what's that, 28% uh, left. Um, so half of 28% is 14. There we go, so 14. So 28% would be the G and the C. So hot G would be 14. 10. Three of the bases found in nucleic acids are pyridines and two are purines, which is the following is correct. You really got to know this stuff here. They love to ask multiple choice questions on this sort of thing. So purines, 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 purines. Oh, uh, this one. Okay, straight to C. Uracil and thymine, adenine and guanine. You could also have cytosine here. Okay. So C. 11. Again, it's uh, the relationships between purines and pyrimidines. Okay, so which of these relationships did he find with the genome of each organism he studied? Well, um, it would be... Uh, this is going to require a little bit of thought here. Zoom in. Okay, so A equals G, C equals T. No, that's wrong. A plus T goes to equal C plus G. No, that's wrong. This is the one. Basically, that is saying that the purines equal the pyrimidines, which is always going to be 50-50, actually. So the answer is C. Uh, a piece of DNA was analyzed, and 15% of its nucleotides were adenine. Therefore, ah, ooh, it's a trick one. DNA... Uh, what percentage would be uracil? Well, it's zero because uracil is only found in RNA. So that's a, a tricky one there. 13. Q is a base. What is it? If that's guanine, that's got to be cytosine. Uh, 14. Which parts, oops, let's scroll back up. Which parts contain carbon? Well, at first glance, you might think, well, it all contains carbon, but actually S doesn't. S is the phosphate, which actually, if we draw it out, looks like this. Okay, it contains phosphorus and oxygen, but no carbon. So the answer is therefore Q and R, which is A. You may have been confused there. Remember, the base does contain nitrogen, but it that doesn't mean it's only made of nitrogen. It's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen, um, with a, just a little bit of nitrogen. 15, I like this question, it's a bit tricky. Okay, foot and mouth disease virus is a pathogen, so on, so on. Now this virus, they analyze it and they find it's got 1996 adenine, 2131 guanine, 1642 uracil, 2365 cytosine. Now the interesting thing there is we don't have the match. A and U don't pair up and G and C don't pair up in the exact same uh, number that we would expect. Therefore, this um, this strand is not double stranded, but single stranded because we haven't got pairing on either side. Okay, so it's single stranded, and because we've got uracil, it's RNA. So it has to be this single stranded RNA. So it's a single stranded RNA virus. Sixteen. How many different trinucleotides can be made using DNA? nucleotides. So you, this is a math thing, or you can also remember it. Uh, so we can have, you know, any of four different positions at the first one, times any of four different positions at the second one, times any of four different positions at the third one. So if you do four times four times four, you'll get the answer, which is 64. And this is also, remember, the number of codons possible. Uh, remember that we say that the codons are degenerate, and that there are multiple different combinations of, uh, of trinucleotides that give one amino acid when it's translated at the ribosome. Answer D there. Um, how many polynucleotide strands are found in a tRNA molecule? This word here might have confused you a little bit, polynucleotide. I don't think I really emphasized this enough when we did the mind map, that, all, that DNA or RNA, those are polymers of nucleotides. So we call them polynucleotides. So how many strands are there in a TNA molecule? It's actually only one. It basically looks like this. You should kind of try and remember this just about. It goes like this. 
round like that. Something a bit like that. And there's, you know, there's some bonds here and bonds here and stuff, but it, it looks a bit like that uh, with the amino acid binding down here and this being the anti-codon down here. So the answer is A there. Okay, moving on to 18. Which, which nucleic acid um, could contain the triplet of bases ACT? Well, this could only be DNA. Why? Well, it's because uh, we've got T. T-thymine is replaced by uracil if it's in RNA, so it has to be DNA. 18 is A. Moving on, 19 and 20 um, refer to this diagram. So which are the two components of part X? So X is the backbone here. The backbone is the sugar phosphate backbone. What sugar, what phosphate? Is it ribose and phosphate? That's a base and phosphate, that's not right. Those are two, that's not right, so that's a base and a sugar. Which one is it? Is it A or is it D? Well, for DNA, we can use deoxyribose, so it's D. A, ribose, that would be like, well, if this was double-stranded RNA, it would be that. Finally, what type of bond is Y? That is a hydrogen bond between bases. Okay, so hopefully you did all right in those multiple choice questions. There's a lot of um, those questions kind of uh, on maths where you get given one percentage of one base and you have to work out the maths to work out what other bases are there in what amounts. So that's something to practice uh, a few more times uh, if, um, if you want to. Okay, so the next um, topic which I'll be setting will be next week after the weekend. Uh, and I think the next one we're going to be doing is on enzymes. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.